Okay. So one of the things that you, that you want to know is, okay, so in part, what's the big deal about all this? Well, one thing is where do you, you know, if you want to give an intramuscular, intramuscular injection, you want to kind of try to avoid all the nerves that are coming out. So one of the big nerves you want to, uh, it's easy to hit would be the sciatic nerve. So what you do is you look at the your the back side here, and uh, you divide that into quadrants. And so you look at the uh, iliac crest up here, go across there, and then you want to be in this upper quadrant, either on the left side or on the right side to do your injection. Because uh, if you go down in the, in the lower part, then you have a much better chance of hitting the sciatic nerve. Next slide. So what happens if you damage the, the sciatic nerve? Um, you get what's called um, um, a foot drop so that um, you aren't able to extend the hip easily. You also don't uh, flex the knee very well. Uh, you get motor wasting. Um, the muscles below the knee would be paralyzed and the weight of the foot causes it to plantar flex. It's called foot drop. And so someone will walk along and then they'll plop their foot down and plop their foot down. So it's kind of stamping um, gait uh, or um, is what it's called. Next slide. If you have a tibial nerve injury, um, it's deep, so it's rarely injured. But if you get, if you add the tibial nerve injured, the opposing muscles, if you remember the, the uh, I just described to you the common fibular nerve, does eversion, eversion of the foot and also dorsiflexes the foot at the ankle, well, then what's going to happen is if there's no opposing muscle in the calf to do that, then your foot gonna, is going to evert and dorsiflex. Okay? So uh, it, since the calf muscles aren't opposing that, if the tibial nerve is, is damaged. Next slide. Then uh, if you have a common perineal nerve or common fibular nerve injury, so right here's the nerve. You have a breakage of the fibula near the head, a fracture, a fracture up there. You could damage that nerve. And so what's going to happen is um, you aren't, you're not able to, uh, since that is doing the anterior muscles, you're unable to dorsiflex your foot as well. So your foot's going to hang down. You're going to have foot, foot drop, and uh, the toes are going to, going to drag as uh, you drag, drag your foot behind you. So and try to, and drag the toes and plop the foot down, and drag and plop the foot down. So that would be a, um, a common perineal nerve injury. Next slide. Okay, so the last things we've got are um, reflexes. So let's talk about reflexes and what those are. So reflex, reflex arc. So you have uh, somatic reflexes, which are skeletal muscles, and autonomic reflexes, the smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. Two types of reflexes um, that, we, that we're going to talk about are spinal reflexes and cranial reflexes. We're really not going to talk about cranial reflexes very much um, until we do, do the cranial nerve. So in this, the components of a reflex arc you have a sensory receptor, sensory neuron, an integrating center, a motor neuron, and an effector. Okay, so the response, the effector response is a reflex. The receptor, if the stimulus is strong enough, if it's strong enough, an action potential is generated within the sensory neuron, which then propagates that action potential, synapses with neurons in the spinal cord or the brain. And the central, central nervous system, the spinal cord or brain, is the integrating center. So you, have, you can have either a monosynaptic reflex or a polysynaptic reflex. And then you have a motor neuron and an effector. Reflexes can also be ipsilateral, contralateral, or bilateral. So ipsilateral reflexes on the same side of the body. Contralateral, you do something on one side and it affects something on the other side of the body. And bilateral, the reflex would affect both sides of the body at the same time. Next slide. So we're going to look at the patellar reflex. The sensory receptors are muscle spindles in the quadriceps femoris, uh, so the quads. Sensory neuron, it's a monosynaptic reflex arc and, a, and also part of a polysynaptic reflex arc. The integrating center is mono, monosynaptic. There's a motor, motor neuron. The effector is a uh, quadriceps femoris group. There is also something called reciprocal innervation, which is stimulation of contraction in muscles. Uh, you have, also have to simultaneously inhibit or relax antag antagonistic muscles. And the sensory neuron in this, for reciprocal, reciprocal innervation, is also part of the polysynaptic reflex arc. So, for instance, I, if, I, if I flex my arm, okay, so my biceps contract to do that, okay, 
but my triceps had to relax. So you had innervation of the biceps and you had reciprocal innervation of the triceps. So it's relaxation, contraction, okay? So, and then if I extend my arm, I have to relax the biceps and I have to contract the, the triceps. The triceps will be innervated and the biceps are now reciprocally innervated. And then I'll go back. So this will innervate the biceps and reciprocal innervation, innervation to relax the triceps. So innervate the triceps, and at the same time, I am doing a reciprocal innervation to relax the triceps. Okay, next slide. So here's a diagram of the components. You have the, um, I'm going to start with a, the sensory receptor, number four over here. So there's a receptor. And then, you, so you get a sensation and you get a nerve impulse come up here. So there's the sensory nerve axon and, or um, cell body is here and then the axon, sensory nerve cell axon, and then you have this integrating center. So here and here with this interneuron, that's your interneuron in the spinal cord, and then you send out a signal along the uh, motor cell, there's the motor cell nerve body here, number seven, and the motor cell nerve axon, and the information goes over in, uh, what's hidden behind my face over here is uh, muscles is muscle cells and those can those are taught to contract so you get a you get so you stick a pin oops stick a pin in your hand accidentally put your hand down and you get stuck with some pain and so it, it sends a reflex to pull your hand back real fast from that from that pain next slide this is showing the reflex arc so you have uh, in this this case what we're doing is we're tapping the patellar tendon here with a hammer, and so that's going to cause this number one here is a stretch receptor. Okay, so it notice, notices that the muscle is being stretched because what happens is when you tap that patellar tendon, that stretches the tendon, it stretches the the quadriceps a little bit, and, it, and the quadriceps goes, oh wait, I wasn't planning on stretching, so I'm going to nap. So I I don't want to do that. I contract, and it makes your leg kick out. And how that works is so this is a stretch receptor here, number one. And then you have the sensory information that comes up through the sensory neuron to the dorsal root ganglion. Okay, that's sensory. And then it comes into an integrating center. And you have two of them that goes. And you also have another branch that goes up the brain going, is going to just let the brain know, hey, there's something weird going on. The brain can, can sit there and think about it and say, is there anything really weird going on or not? But this reaction happens very very quickly going down through number four all the way down to so the motor neuron causes the muscle to contract at the same time there's a second signal that goes down through here and that's reciprocal innervation and it causes the hamstrings to relax so so those those two things have to happen so if you so you have your, your leg bent you hit it with a hammer hit the patellar tendon with a hand, hammer leg kicks out because those muscles those quadriceps muscles contracted at the same time those hamstring muscles had to that under there had to relax to allow the, the hamstring to, to do that. Otherwise, you tear the hamstrings. So you're, you're um, or at least pull them. So your um, so your muscles have to work in uh, in concert with each other. So there's two innervations that happen. Then you also have this. So this is a this is a monosynaptic uh, reflex arc here, but there's also a polysynaptic portion over here, and also there's other portions that go up to the brain to say, hey, somebody's hit me with a hammer. What do you want me to do? Normally, when we were in lab, we would do these reflexes, and it'd be a lot of fun to whack each other with, ham with hammers. But unfortunately, we can't do that. So, um, next slide. Here's just another example of this, a uh, more complicated example, in, in a sense. Uh, you're walking along, and you hit a hit a little nail or something, and so what happens is your foot. You have pain sensation come up. And it goes into the spinal cord up here through the dorsal root ganglion into a multi uh, synaptic um, integrating center. And so you have uh, some reciprocal innervation occurring as well as innervation occurring. But you, um, what you do is you innervate, you reciprocal innervate your hamstrings. Well, so you innervate your hamstring. To, sorry, you innervate your hamstring to pull your leg back away from that, um, away from that tack that you just put 
that you kicked into, and then you step back down with uh, by innervating the uh, the biceps uh, femoris for yeah, muscles or the quadriceps femoris muscles. Plus, there's a whole bunch of other um, and and you know this, and so this is all happening, and you have lots of other innervations that are happening all at the same time. Because you, you can't just innervate just one one set of muscles. You have to innervate muscles in your foot as well as your calf, as well as balance muscles up up top. So, so you keep you keep yourself upright while you're while you're uh, stepping away from the stack. Next slide. Some other uh, reflexes that are interesting to think about. Those were we're talking about adult reflexes, but neonatal or newborn baby reflexes, especially the Babinski sign and Moro and fencing reflexes are kind of fun. Moro um, Moro uh, reflex is um, if you, if you if you ever dropped something around a baby, they'll go, and their, their hands will just go go out. So you have um, you have uh, extension of the arms, the fingers are extended, and if you have loud noise, and they'll they'll calm back down. So it's just a startle reflex. Um, there's also another one that's kind of, it's really kind of cute. If you turn the head to the side, the arm and leg on that side will extend. So if you turn turn the baby's head. It'll extend, and this this arm comes comes over this way. If you turn the head the other way, it goes back the other way because it's called the fencing reflex because it looks like someone's you know is ready to is is ready to you know, on guard fence with somebody. A Babinski sign is another uh, fun one. Um, you actually you can actually do this if you have uh, kids or spouse at home or something you want to want to try this on them. Um, you got to take the take the shoes off and you take something doesn't have to be sharp but uh, just something that's you know someone somewhat pointy like the end of a pin or something like that so and you'll drag it up um so this is the foot with the toe big toe so you drag it up over the towards the the fifth the pinky toe and then across and if it's if they're normal either nothing happens or they curl their toes okay if they're really ticklish they'll probably curl their toes and pull pull back but you go up and across okay uh, up there and across and the toes will curl toes will curl in, a, in an infant, the toes don't curl; they they separate like that. So they abduct, and so it's very characteristic. And if they don't abduct in a newborn, then there may be something wrong. And if they abduct in an adult, then that indicates that there is some sort of nerve uh, neurological issue, uh, maybe possibly a nerve injury. Okay, and also oh, one other fun one is like stepping and dancing. So if you hold a baby. And you put their feet down so it just touches the surface. They'll also learn. They'll pick their feet up, go back and forth. So, so it's fun stuff to do with babies. Okay. Anyway, next slide. So, okay. So I'm going to put some videos up of testing reflexes, what those look like, and you guys can watch those. The patellar reflex, the biceps reflex. You can, if you actually, um, there's a ten, the biceps tendon right there. So if you have an arm relax and you hit that, um, it'll actually cause a reflex. Tricep reflex, there's a tendon back here, so you can hit that. It'll cause your, the arm to flex. Achilles reflex, um, if you put your knee down on a chair and have your foot hanging off the side and have somebody hit the Achilles tendon, it'll cause, cause the toes to flex. Uh, to flex. And then the um, uh, plantar flexion, um, you, can also, uh, you can also see see that one as well if you do the um, stroke up the bottom of, the, of somebody's foot. Okay, um, next slide. Okay, so there we are. We're done with the spinal nerves. Yay! So, um, anyway, I'll post the videos for you for the um, uh, for the uh, for the reflexes, and you can watch those. Those those are short videos, not a big deal. And um, the next thing we'll do is we're going to go on to cranial nerves. So I'll do that uh, lecture next, and see you on the next video. Bye.